Yes. Mr. Bundy calling him on 9-0. Right, just a moment. Thank you. afternoon one. Uh, in order to get the Canadians fully on board with as much of this message to Hanoi as we can get, we think it very important for someone to speak personally with Pearson. And I've tentatively nominated myself because I don't see anybody else. Would you object to my going up there tomorrow morning to give him the picture where we're going to be briefing his uh, man and saying, giving you, giving whatever you would authorize me to say this afternoon? Uh, or would you rather have the department do it or Butterworth do it, or would you want to do it by phone? The difficulty with the phone is it's not entirely secure. Uh, what their man is willing to carry in terms of messages to Hanoi may have a great deal to do with uh, how we can get this thing turned off peacefully. And uh, that Mike should know that he was doing it for you and not just for a lot of other people. Is, uh, I think you could do it Friday. Uh, I think right. maybe tomorrow you ought to be here. You ought to be here. All right, I could do it that way. I can right. do it that way. Uh, second uh, question, um, Stevenson, you're going to be going up to New York. I uh, talked to him this morning, and uh, he's going to, he wanted to come down to see me, and he's yeah. going to call me back, and we finally kind of agreed we'd try to get together tomorrow night. I would have thought that was the best way to do it, and uh, I think we ought to plan that basis. I'll tell you, the more I just stayed awake last night thinking about this thing, the more I think of it, I don't know what in the hell... Uh, it looks like me, we're getting into another Korea. It just worries the hell out of me. I don't see what we can ever hope to get out of there with once we're committed. Once I believe the Chinese communists coming into it. I don't think that we can fight them 10,000 miles away from home and ever get anywhere on uh, in that area. I don't think it's worth fighting for, and I don't think we can get out. And it's just the biggest damn mess. It I is. Saw. It's an awful mess. And we just got to think about. To, I look at this sergeant of mine this morning. Got six little old kids over there, and he's getting out my things and bringing me in my night reading and all that kind of stuff. And I just thought about ordering or those kids in there. there. And what in the hell am I ordering him out there for? One what, thing what that the is Vietnam to me. worth to me. What is Laos worth to me? What is it worth to this country? No, we have now to we got a treaty, but still, we got a treaty, but hell, uh, everybody else got a treaty out there, and they're not doing anything about it. Yeah. yeah. Now, of course, if you start running the communists, they may just chase you right into your own kitchen. Yeah, that's the trouble. And well, that is what the rest of the uh, that half of the world is going to think if this thing comes apart on us. That's that's the dilemma. That's exactly the dilemma. But everybody I talk to that's got any sense now, they just says, oh, my God, please give us thought. Of course, I was reading uh, Mansfield stuff this morning, and it's just uh, milk toast as it can be. He got no yeah. spine at all. Yeah. But uh, uh, this is a terrible thing we're getting ready to do. Mr. President, I just think that the biggest is the only big decision in one sense that was has, this one is one we're having either we either reach up and get it or we let it go by. And I'm not telling you today what I'd do in your position. I just think the most we have to do is to pray with it for another while. Anybody else that we got that we can advise with that might have any judgment on this question? Um, that might have some, might be fresh, might have some new approach. Would, would Bradley be any good? Would Clay be any no, good? No, Bradley be What's no good. I do not think Clay would add. I think you're constantly searching, if I understand you correctly, for some means of stiffening this thing that does not have this escalating aspect to it. And. Uh, I have been up and down this with Bob McNamara, and I've been up and down it again with Mike, with Mike Forrestal. I think there are some marginal things that we can do, and I think the notion of, uh, and I don't, I think the, uh, also, Mr. President, you can do what I think Kennedy did at least once, which is to 
make the threat without having made your own internal decision that you'd actually carry it through. Now, I think the risk in that is that we have at least seemed to do it once or twice before. And there's another dilemma in here, which is how the difficulty your own people have in, in uh, I'm not talking about Dean Rusk or Bob McNamara or me, but people who are at second remove, uh, who just uh, find it very hard to be firm if they're not absolutely clear what your decision is. And yet, you must safeguard that decision and keep your... What does Bill right? think we ought to do? He's in favor of touching things up, but you ought to talk to him about it. I've got an extremely good memorandum from Forrestal that I'm just getting ready for you that shows what he thinks about it. And he what does he think? He thinks we ought to be ready to move a little bit, a little bit, and mainly the Vietnamese. On the other hand, uh, readiness to do more. He believes, really, that that's the best way of galvanizing the South, that if they feel that we are prepared to take a little action against the center of this infection, uh, that that's the best way of... What action do we take, though? What well, uh, I, I think that we really need to do use target folder work, Mr. President, that shows precisely what we do and don't mean here. And uh, the main object is to kill as few people as possible while creating an environment in which the incentive to react is as low as possible. But I can't say to you this is a small matter. There's one other thing that I've thought about that I've only just thought about overnight, and it's on this same matter of saying to a guy, you go to, go to Korea or you go to Vietnam and you fight in the rice paddies. I would love to know what would happen if we were to say in this same speech, and from now on, nobody goes to this task who doesn't volunteer. I think if we could, we might turn around the atmosphere of our own people out there if it were a volunteer's enterprise. I suspect the Joint Chiefs won't agree to that, but I, I, I'd like to know what, what happened. If we really dramatize this as Americans against terror and Americans keeping their commitment and Americans who have only peace as their object and only Americans who want to go have to go, you might change the temper of it some. But you wouldn't have a corporal's guard, would you? I just don't know. I just don't know. I, if that's true, then I'm not sure where the country to do this job. I, I don't think it's just Morris and Russell and I know it isn't, I think it, I think it's 90 percent of the people who don't want any part of it. Did you see the poll this morning? 65 percent of them don't know anything about it. And of those know. that do, the majority think we're mishandling it, but I'm they don't sure know what to right. do. That's Gallup. Yeah. Yeah. And. It's damned easy to get in a war, but it's going to be awfully hard to ever extricate yourself if you easy. get in. It's very easy. I'm very sensitive to the fact that people who are having trouble with an intransigent problem find it very easy to come and say to the President of the United States, go and be tough. What does, what does Lippmann think you ought to do? Well, I'm going to talk with him at greater length. What he really thinks is that you should provide a diplomatic structure within which the thing can go uh, under the control of Hanoi and uh, uh, walk away from it. I think that's. I don't think that's an unfair statement. But I'm. I will ask him. To do you mean he thinks that you, that Hanoi ought to take South Vietnam? Yes, sir. Diplomatically. Mm -hmm. Maybe by a, calling it a neutralization and removing American force and letting it slip away the way Laos did. It might would if we didn't do anything, and will if we don't do anything. And uh, that the. the we would guarantee the neutrality in some sort of a treaty that we would write. Uh, I think it, I'm sorry, i do not sure I'm the best person to describe Lippmann's views, because I, I don't agree with them. And, uh, who, who, who's he been talking to besides you? Has he talked to Rusk any on this? He's, he's talked, talked to, to George Mary? Ball. He's talked to George Ball, and he's talked to, uh, uh, I don't think he's talked to Rusk, and I don't think he's talked to McNamara. Wouldn't it be good for he and McNamara to sit down and... I think it would be very good, but I don't, uh, I, and I, I think that uh, uh, I'll, I'll do, I had planned to have lunch with Walter on Monday because I couldn't find a workable time before that, but I can do it sooner if you'd like me to. I wish you would. I will. I try to get I try to get him uh, I'll get, get his idea a little more concrete before I leave here, and I'd like to have him talk to McNamara. I might, I might just have the three of you in this afternoon sometime. All right. The Walter, NBA. McNamara, and him, I'd like to. I'd like to hear Walter and McNamara de uh, evaluate this thing, yeah. All right. Uh, what's a uh, possible time? Well, that's possible time. Well, at 4 o'clock time, you've got open. The damned Irishman is all over the place. Off-record meetings on Southeast Asia, they got you at 4 today. That's at 4. That's to review the telegrams to Lodge and other action items that we've been working on the last two days. And I've got Ireland at 5, so why don't we just uh, see if they can't come at 4? 
Uh, I put off the four o'clock meeting. No, yeah, put. Uh, uh, or do you want to put Lipman at six, or do you want? No, to? no, I got to dinner tonight. Yeah. Uh, we better. Uh, we could you and I get together three forty-five, and Lipman and Mac come in at four if they would. Yes. Uh, what happens then to the working meeting is my only problem. How long do you have to have it? Uh, it might wouldn't take you ten fifteen minutes. Well, I'd say come in. I'll come in three forty five with you. You'll try and do that business. And then have them come in at four. All right. Well, I'll make it three. It's three forty five, and then have Lipman standing by at four fifteen, huh? mm -hmm. or four o'clock. From four, four o'clock on. Yeah. I see.